head of the United Nations mission in South Sudan. And Nicholas Haysom says the crisis in Sudan has implications for the implementation of the revitalized peace agreement and the impacts of that conflict unfolding along multiple fronts. Special representative of the United Nations Secretary General and head of the mission says over 117,000 women, children and men have crossed over into South Sudan from Sudan along the border areas since mid-April. In the meantime, interim chairperson of EGARD's reconstructed a joint uh, monitoring and evaluation commission, General Charles Tai Gothai, says South Sudan has enjoyed the longest period of relative peace and stability over the last five years of implementations of the agreement. Sudan has implications for the implementation of the revitalized peace agreement in South Sudan. The impact of that conflict are unfurling along multiple fronts. Since mid-April, over 117,000 women and children and men have crossed over into South Sudan from Sudan along the border areas. 93% of these are South Sudanese returnees. I want to commend the government of South Sudan for its open border policy to all those who are fleeing the conflict with or without travel documents. The absorption capacity of the government and humanitarians in South Sudan, however, is under strain with limited local resources and bottlenecks of arrivals in South Sudan's border towns, notably in Rank. Let's move to the southern part of the continent where the South African National Association of school governing bodies have raised concerns over a high number of teachers linked to sexual misconduct cases. The ISA Council of Educators is now pro proposing that a cautionary course warning against a sexual misconduct between teachers and students be added to the university course curriculum. Meanwhile, more than 452 cases of sexual misconduct have been reported to the SA Council for Educators over the past three years. Basic Education Minister Angie Mashenga revealed that the stats are indicating that these cases were on the rise. The past financial year saw 191 cases being recorded. Now, to discuss more on this, we are joined by education activist Hendrik Makaneta, of course, uh, joining from Haltang. Thank you so much for your time, Hendrik. Thank you very much indeed. All right, so let's uh, get straight to it. Now, perhaps uh, let's start with a, a more context for our viewers. Uh, briefly, let us understand uh, this particular, you know, really disturbing issue more broadly. Well, uh, to be quite honest, the issue of uh, central uh, misconduct uh, amongst teachers and learners is very serious. We see the trend happening a lot in the various provinces. And of course, the main problem is the fact that uh, perpetrators get away with uh, this uh, misconduct uh, because victims in most cases are unwilling to come to court uh, to come and testify. And as a result, you find that uh, the perpetrators are left uh, spot free and they cannot be prosecuted because of a uh, lack of evidence or because of the inability of uh, you know, those that have been violated uh, to come to court. Uh, sometimes they just come appear once in court and in the next appearance, the victim does not appear. And the court is left with no choice but to throw the matter out of court uh, as time proceeds. Now, it looks like this, uh, of course, uh, particular issue has been going on for a number of years. What has been done by the education department and also, you know, by activists like yourself? Well, uh, the department, unfortunately, without any, any uh, court of law ruling, without any adverse finding against the teacher, it becomes very difficult to, uh, for instance, fire the teacher. Uh, because if you fire somebody, there must be, uh, you know, evidence that has been presented and the person must have been subjected to the laws of the country. So in most cases, some of the teachers go from one province uh, to the next. 
and so you, you cannot put their names on the National Register of uh, Sex Offenders uh, because of the fact that they have not been found uh, guilty by any court of law. Uh, it's only those instances where the court has pronounced itself, uh, you know, that uh, teachers can be taken to task and that, uh, you know, the rule of law can also apply in the schools. So in the absence of any court decision, it becomes very difficult to just, uh, you know, deal with this matter. All right. Now, uh, I mean, despite some legislations, um, it seems there is yet to be any breakthrough because this has been going on for quite some time. Now, are the authorities maybe taking a look at the circumstances of some of the young people who fall prey to these teachers to see ways to enable them to be able to, you know, get quickly noticed and do something almost immediately should they notice something wrong or even report it? Definitely. Uh, as we speak, we, from time to time, the authorities, as well as civil society like ourselves, we do run uh, programs and campaigns uh, so that learners can be aware of these uh, predators, uh, you know, sex predators who are found in schools. But at the same time, before teachers can be admitted or, or employed, they need to submit a uh, police clearance. Uh, you know, the police clearance from the South African Police Service has to declare that the teacher has not been found guilty of any misconduct relating to a uh, sexual offense against uh, young people or, or against minors. So in such a case, you know, the department is able to employ people who are fit uh, for purpose. Uh, and, you know, in addition to this, we also have uh, women's organizations that are actively involved in campaigning for the safety of not only girl learners, but also uh, boy learners, so that uh, the learners can be able to study in a conducive environment uh, where they can be able to prepare a better future for themselves. All right, thank you so much for your time, Hendrik. Thank you very much indeed.